Thanks for checking out this review video. So this is for Creepshow Season 3, Episode 3, and it's coming to Shudder on Thursday, October 7th. And because I'm putting this review up ahead of time, it's no spoilers. Uh, but when you come back after you've watched it, you can go ahead and talk spoilers in the comments. That is totally fine, and we can do that. So know that off the bat. Um, one of the big things, well, two, two big things. One, I feel like overall, I know we're only three episodes in at this point, or at least I am. I feel like season three is hitting me a lot better than season two did. So that's a good thing. The other thing is I feel like for season three, they've really been shaving down the amount of time that the creep is getting in the episodes uh, significantly. Because in this episode in particular, the creep has no intro, has no outro, only just shows up very, very briefly in between the stories. And I've always felt like I really want that little intro from the creep and the outro. And even if they get rid of the stuff in between, I just feel like an intro and outro would be nice because they were doing that for a while. So I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know why they're shaving back the creep's time so much. Maybe it's just because, you know, they're running out of time to get these episodes out or they don't want to spend more money on animation. I don't know. Plus, the other thing is the animation for this season for the creep has been more simplified animation. It's significantly more simplistic in design, which I'm fine with because animation styles are very different and I'm fine with a lot of them. So, you know, I just want more of the creep, honestly. So the first story in this one is called The Last Subaraya. And this is a good one. This is quite a good one. I really enjoy this. Uh, I think it's actually slightly outperforms the familiar from the last episode, which I really like the familiar as well. Uh, this one's directed by Jeffrey F. January, who really has only done four episodes of The Walking Dead directorially. So, um, but I will say good job on directing, good cinematography with this. It's solidly done. The script is written by Paul Dini and Stephen Langford. Now, Paul Dini has done lots of animated Batman episodes, apparently, writing-wise, and he also wrote the script for the creep show story the right snuff with uh steven langford he also wrote it at that point so they collaborated this is our second time collaborating also steven steven langford had written some episodes of family matters malcolm in the middle both good shows and he did a, the script for skin crawlers which was in season one of creep show which i did quite enjoy i didn't like the right snuff i did like skin crawlers so there are no, like, big stars in this one. Uh, it's the same with the second story as well. Overall, this episode, just no big big names, uh, which is fine, you know, as long as the acting is decent. And I think, overall, the acting between the two stories, pretty decent. I, I was fine with it. I think the acting in this first story, The Last Subaraya, is definitely better than the acting in the second story, though. The setup for this one generates solid interest in where things may go. Uh, it's a very intriguing setup. It's a very different type of story. And the setting, I really, really enjoy the setting in this because it gives you a lot to look at. And you'll see what I'm talking about. It's a different set uh, than what most of the stories have been. And like I said, it gives you a lot to look at. And I appreciate that. Uh, there's a type of character who is supposed to be hated. And I think pretty much everyone's going to be able to get behind hating this type of character. Um... It's been used in film before, and um, nobody likes this type of character. I think the character was well acted as well, and so between the writing of the character and the acting of the character, you hate him. Comes across exactly the way it's supposed to. Very solid acting for this. Uh, I would say it's actually good acting for the most part. Uh, except there's one character in particular who's briefly in it. Um, not so great, but everyone else did a good job. There's something a character does that I didn't see coming, and most people also won't see this thing coming, uh, and it makes a great point about certain people of considerate wealth. Um, you'll know what I mean when you watch it. There's kind of this surprise moment where, you know, things are going on and you're just like, you're assuming that things are headed in one direction, and then there's a surprise thing that the, one of these characters does and you're just like, oh, um, A, didn't see that coming. B, why in the world would you do that? But it then is explained. So, you know, you get it. And it just kind of adds to hatred of character. It really does. There are some good practical effects in this. I did enjoy the, the practical effects use. Uh, there are a few small moments of CGI use, and the CGI does not look very good. 
I hate that. I hate that. I hate that when you use a little bit of CGI and it looks wonky and that definitely happens in this one. So that's one of my biggest criticisms. But overall, I really did enjoy this in many, many ways. They incorporate some comic book elements and it's good, but at one point they're changing through panels of the comic and you're supposed to kind of read along and they move way too fast for you to be able to actually read the panels unless I'm just too slow of a reader, but I guess you can be the judge of that when you watch it. You know, you can even come back, put a comment down there and say, oh, I didn't really have any problem with it because maybe it's just me. I don't know. But to me, it felt like they should have moved a little bit slower when they were going through the panels. But I think the comic book aspect of integration in this story was good and significantly more than a lot of stories that have been done in the Creepshow series. So I appreciated that quite a bit. Um, and the last thing, I quite like the story and the execution of the story. I'm a fan of this one for sure. But there is one character who explains everything. And it's everything that would otherwise be left as subtext. And that kind of kills the experience a little bit. You'll know what I'm talking about because you see why things are happening and you see the point that's being made during a lot of events within the story and you're fine with that. But then all of a sudden there's this one character who continually will be like, oh, well, this is happening because of this. Like they literally tell you. And that's one of the biggest things that drives me nuts is it's it seems like you're treating your audience like they're stupid. And I think that it's, it really ruins the experience. At least it does to me. It didn't ruin my experience of this, but it definitely lessened my experience of the story. I would have liked it even more if they would have just kept it subtext because it it just seems like they're they're explaining it to you like you're an idiot and you're just like, no, I get it. You don't have to like implicitly say it to me. It's something that was taught, you know, very early on when I was taking like writing classes and doing script writing at times, people would always say, like, show it, don't tell it. Like, that's the big thing. Like, you want to show people something through the actions and through the story. You don't want to tell them explicitly in your writing what's happening and how they should be feeling and what I, and, you know, the point that they should be getting from it. If you write it well enough, they will get that point. And I think this is written well enough that people will get the point so you certainly don't need that extra dialogue from that character calling it out. So that's just one little thing that really bothered me. But all that said, I really did enjoy the story. I thought it was very well executed in many ways. And I'm going to give this story a four-star rating. It is very good. Uh, big fan. Okay. Then the second story is called OK, I'll Bite. Now, this one was written and directed by John Harrison. Now, John Harrison has directed some Tales from the Dark Side. Tales from the Crypt, uh, and then the episodes that he's directed for uh, the Creepshow series, The House of the Head, which is one of my favorites, All Hallows Eve, Night of the Paw, Times is Tough and Musky Holler, and Within the Walls of Madness. So he's done a lot. No big stars in this one, like I said. Uh, the acting in this one is fine. It, and, you know, it's solid enough, it's good enough, but in contrast to the last Subaraya, uh, it's not as good. I think the acting in that was a lot better, um, but still good enough. There are a few spots of ADR issues in this where literally the voice, the voices that they record after the fact and try and match to the actors don't match up. So that's a problem. Now, that's a problem that came up in the familiar story from the last episode, too. So I don't know what's happening there. Uh, I don't know if it's the screener copy I'm getting and that's what's going on or that's actually a problem, but maybe someone out there, you can watch this and let me know in the comments, did you spot any ADR issues in this one? Solid enough story setup, but the pacing is not the greatest. Uh, it definitely feels like, well, it's really weird because I was going to say it definitely feels like it should have been edited down more, but story-wise, there was more to tell. So it's a situation where when the story ends, you feel like there should be more to tell and it feels like it's a bit abrupt and you feel like I want more to the ending. But while the film is, or while the story's happening, you're like, can we move this along a little bit faster? It seems like you're kind of wasting time. So this is actually adapted from a short story that John Harrison had written. So I just think there was a bit of an issue with adapting 
from the short story to the screenplay or the teleplay as they call it. So I just think the translate, like it just didn't happen the best, you know, maybe someone else should have been the one to adapt it because it seems like maybe there was some better stuff that was left in the story that should have been moved over to the script instead of some of the stuff that ended up moving over there. So just saying. They use something that will creep some people out, and it's actually used a lot in the story. It's actually one of the main points of the story. So if people are squeamish about certain things, and you'll know what I'm talking about, like it is immediately apparent like what I, I'm talking about when you see this. Um, it's just a phobia for some people. So uh, it's going to be a real nightmare for certain people. I'm fine with it. I have no problem. Uh, I like the incorporation of this thing, actually. thought it was pretty cool. Good CGI in this one. So where I was saying there's some wonky CGI in the last uh, Subaraya. Sorry, that name's hard for me to get or remember the pronunciation of. But the last Subaraya, uh, there was some wonky CGI in OK, I'll Bite. There is really good CGI, actually. They put a lot of effort into getting that CGI right in. And it really does pay off. It really, really, really does. So I like that. Uh, and like I said, when it ends, you're just kind of like, it's abrupt. You're kind of like, that's it. And I feel like there's more to it. So I would be interested to actually read the short story that this is based off of to kind of see what did get moved over and what didn't and how much richer the short story is, because I'm sure it is. I'm sure the short story is better than this story. But that said, I did enjoy the story overall. It's different for what's been offered within the Creepshow series. And um, it's good. It, it, it's definitely worth watching. I didn't I didn't dislike it. So out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm giving it a very solid three rating. Uh, three star rating. Sorry, I should have said that. So a four star and a three star. So doing well. Um, like I said, I feel like season three has been pretty good. And episodes two and three of season three have definitely been better than episode one of season three. So where usually you feel like they start strong with the first episode of a season, I feel like it's been the opposite. They started weak and then they got better. So I'm very much interested to see where we go from here. I believe we have three more episodes to come and I'm, I'm digging it. I'm in. And then just a reminder that once that's done, I'm going to be putting out two separate videos. I'm going to put out a video that is my ranking of all the stories from season three and then I'm going to put out a video that's my ranking of all Creepshow stories. So seasons one, two, and three, and all the specials. So you'll want to check that one out. That's going to take longer because there's a lot to talk about, uh, a lot of stories. But anyway, thank you for checking this out. Go ahead and put some comments down there if you want to talk about this. And like I said, you can go ahead and do spoilers in the comments. Uh, do me a quick favor, though. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. I really would appreciate that. It does mean a lot to me. It takes you literally a second. It costs you no money. And it's your way to repay me. It, it really, really is your way to repay me. If you've liked anything I've done, I'm not making money doing this or anything, I'm just doing it as a way to, you know, build a nerdy horror community. Because I want to talk nerdy with people. And where I live, I don't have that. Uh, people definitely won't get nerdy, especially at the level I want to, about horror. So uh, I appreciate everyone who subscribes. But Regardless, I really appreciate you for taking your time uh, to watch this, and until next time, keep it brutal.